know what for you service means, but I know for me service hasn't always been something that's fired me up in my heart. We've got a few of the pre-teens here today. Amen. What fires you up pre-teens in your life? What fires you up? Come on, let's have some hands. What fires you What do you like doing as pre-teens in your life? Come on, Kendra. Say again. Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Wow. Sports. Good answer. Fortnite. Fortnite. Violent gaming. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? What about Liam? What do you like, Liam? Where's Liam? Say again. Football. Football. Yeah, more sports. Good. Sports is a theme going on here. <laughs> and um, when I was a preteen, I liked most of those sorts of things, but I didn't like the idea of serving in matters of cleaning toilets and those sorts of things. And that's for me what service was all about when I was a preteen. And needless to say, I wasn't very excited about service much at all. However, now, I will say I actually have a very different view on service now. God has helped me to see, you know what, Ben, actually service is a great blessing. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. What's the point of service? And that's what we're going to discuss, because there is actually in the Bible... A great point to service according to Jesus. My first point, serving in the kingdom of God. Let's have a read of John uh, chapter 13, verse 1. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had prompted, Jude, had prompted Judas, the, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped round him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not, re- not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only wash their feet, their whole body is clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus sets an example and a blueprint of what the kingdom of heaven is going to be all about here 2,000 years ago. A kingdom. Surely a kingdom should be all about receiving. What can I get off you? Jesus says, no. The kingdom is about what can I give to you. That's what Jesus sets an example for what it means to be part of the kingdom of heaven. And he sets about washing his disciples' feet. Now, I'm sure many of us wouldn't be too fired up to be washing many people's feet. I would hate to wash Karen Heath's feet. That would be a horrible experience, I'm sure. I can just imagine the the rotting, the rotting smell that would come from it. Karen's very proud of that. Look at her, she's fired up. Can you imagine? When uh, I, we were on holiday recently in um, in Sicily, and um, my feet have a particular desire to sweat. My feet sweat horrifically, and they sweat so badly that all the dirt that's brought up on them leaks out of the sides of my sandals. So when we went up back up to back up to the room. Wherever I walked, there was a sort of black mark behind me because it was a sort of congealed sweat and sweat and dirt. So I'm sure you wouldn't want to wash my feet. But in the kingdom of heaven, we're called to serve each other. 
and serve each other in a way that goes beyond what we might just want for ourselves. We wouldn't, Jesus I'm sure didn't think, oh, today I'm fired up, I'm going I'm I'm to wash Peter's feet. I love washing feet and I'm going to wash Peter's feet. I'm sure he didn't feel like that. But he was setting an example of what it meant to be part of the kingdom of heaven. Being part of the kingdom of heaven is about serving and being willing to wash each other's feet. And as Christians in the church, that's what our lives are about. The church is a body, it's an organism. And all the different parts, all the different servants in the, in, in the, kingdom, of, in the kingdom of heaven, in the church, serve each other all the time. Next slide, please. We've all got different functions, haven't we? We all do different things. We've got the song leaders. We've got the leaders of Kids' Kingdom. I always appreciate the work that Fabian and Jean put in in Kids' Kingdom. It was great to see Alex Clegg doing his best Dave Gilmore slash Robert Plant impersonation today up the front. Sorry. <laughs> Who's the other guy? Jimmy Page. Sorry, not Robert Plant. Wrong one. Um, but, you know, we've all got our talents, haven't we? We've all got our, our talents and our abilities in life. And God gives us to them so that we can serve. 1 Peter chapter 4. It's up there. I'll, uh, I'll read it out in my Bible. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I recently read a, a book on grace by Max Licardo. And uh, one of the principles that I got out from that book was that we're all given grace and that grace manifests itself in gifts. And we're all given grace, but we're not just given grace so that we can have gifts for the sake of having gifts. We're given gifts and we're given grace so we can serve others. It's in grace that we receive gifts so that we can serve because it is indeed a grace to be able to serve. And that's what Peter's saying here. He's saying, you've got to serve with the gift that you've been given. What is your gift today? Maybe it's a gift of encouragement. Maybe it's a gift of physical service. I appreciate you know, Nathan Munro hanging, ha- handing out all the, the communion today. It's a serving, serving thing to do. Perhaps it's, I don't, I don't know what else, song leading. Uh, you know, Iggy, I think his gift should be prayer after his awesome prayer and his, uh, his welcome. And, um, but that's the thing. It's, as Christians, part of us washing each other's feet figuratively is thinking, what's my gift in the church? How can I contribute to the rest of the members of the church through that gift? What is your gift? Next slide, please. Who was here? Who was at this event recently? Bianca, Heinrich, Michael Compton, Alex Clegg, Krups. Um, it was a great time. Sorry, Krups is my, my nickname for Ruben. Um, this, is, this was the Nepal kind of uh, barbecue slash outdoor movie night. And I really wanted to give some encouragement to the young peeps, our young, our young people's group. Because I really feel like there's some great examples of servants in the young peeps at the moment. There's a few of us there. There's Fabian walking around. He's, he's away in America at the moment. But he was great. He, he thought, you know, my gift is I like games. So he brought along some board games and that was part of the, part of the things you could do at this event. Gene was involved as well. Heinrich was doing some barbecuing. He bought loads of food and loads of drinks. He was a servant. He used his talent of knowing how to barbecue better than the English. And he used that to, 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 to produce a really good barbecue so that we could, we could raise money for the gift, for the, for, for the work of the poor in Nepal. Elliot Manku was so desperate to serve that he broke his leg playing basketball. What a, what a legend. Um, Ems and Nora, they brought friends a lot. They brought friends along. They weren't Christians in the church, but they, they, they brought them along. And hey, that was another, another chance for, uh, you know, God's love to be spread and for us to raise some money for the work in Nepal. Everyone who came, whether you came, if you came, you were involved in giving. You helped make the day a better experience. You helped give to the poor. That was an example of service. And I, I think everyone was there who was there will say it was a really great day and it was a day where God 
really was glorifying. You know, Rudy Nazel giving up their house to be happy to have a, some pretty amazing go on. But, um, you know, being happy to, uh, for us to have our special day there was really, really, a uh, really special thing. So, you know, thank you for that. But that's an example of service and using the gifts that you have to, for, for, for the sake of the, the larger community of Christians as a whole. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's have a look. Uh, let's next slide, please. <clears throat> right, my second point. Service to the very end. Have a look in uh, John 15. It's up there, actually. Um, it says, <clears throat> My command is this. This is Jesus speaking. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has, none, has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Service to the very end. Jesus was all about service, wasn't he? And Jesus says the greatest way to show love to somebody is to serve them and to lay your life down for them to the very end. You know, it's one thing to give a present to somebody on Christmas or to give uh, an encouraging word to them on a Sunday at church. Now, those are good things. We should, we should, we should do them. But Jesus says here, as Christians, the amazing thing is, is that we can lay down our lives for each other, for that is true love. You know, we get a lot of conflicting understandings of what love means in the media. You know, love is about a feeling, and it's about, you know, a sexual attraction. But no, Jesus says... Love is about laying your life down for your friends. The early church was an incredible example of this. It was full of people who loved so much that they would... Acts 2 talks about people selling their possessions because people were in need and needed financial, you know, needed money. They would sell their possessions so they could give to the people, the other Christians who had need. It was laying their lives down for each other. And that's what we as Christians are called to do. Jesus set the ultimate example, didn't he? He, d- he gave his life on the cross. You know, I appreciate Heinrich's uh, communion today. Uh, when I think about communion, it's amazing just to think how much God loved me. You know, God loved me so much, he would have his hands pierced, you know, a crown of thorns put on his head and blood spilt. Because he loved me. And if it was just me on the cross, he would have done the same thing. If it had just been for me, it's for all of us. But if it had just been for me, or just you, he would have done that. Jesus set the example of literally laying down his life. Next slide, please. And for us, as Christians, it's not just about being at church on a Sunday. It's not just about attending and showing up and saying... Hello. It's about real relationships where we care about each other deeply to the very end, regardless of what it takes. Maybe there's someone in your life, maybe there's a Christian you know who's having some real challenges in their lives at the moment. Maybe they've got some family challenges, some health challenges, job challenges, and they need encouragement. Maybe a phone call won't do what they need. Maybe they need someone to go and see them. As Christians, Jesus encourages us, let's go the extra mile. Let's give our lives to the very end to give what each other really needs. I think one of my favourite examples of of giving to the end is from a a book I read about the early Christians called Will the Real Heretics Please Stand Up? One of my absolute favourite books of all time. And um, it's, it's, there's, there's a story about one of, the, one of the Christians, I think it was in the 15th century, one of the Anabaptist movements. And um, I, don't, I can't remember the, the person's name, but he set an example. The, the, it, the, the, the book's basically all about Christians throughout the last 2,000 years standing up for what was right, regardless of what you know, authorities or religious authorities said was right. Basically following God and the Bible, regardless of what it cost him. And this one, this one guy was, he lived in, a, you know, the place he was living was a, a cold area. And um, 
he was on the run from the authorities, and they were basically trying to kill him for his beliefs about God and what he was teaching about God. And as it was, he was running across this icy lake, and um, he was running across this icy lake, and he was being churned people who were trying to basically capture him and kill him. And he was getting away from them. And he looked behind him and he saw that one of, his, one of the people who was chasing him had fallen through the ice and was going to drown and was going to die while chasing him because there was no one there. There was icy water, it was, it was incredibly cold. And against everything logical, he decided to turn around and try and rescue his, his chaser and his accuser because he was willing to lay down his life. And it meant in the end he literally did lay down his life because he was captured for doing what he did. He saved the man, the man lived, but he was captured and he was executed for putting into practice what Jesus said, to lay down his life for someone else. You know, it's one thing to lay down your life for a friend. It's another thing to lay down your life for an enemy. That's what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that's what we have the opportunity to do for each other. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Point number three. Okay. Service, the meaning of greatness. This is one of my favourite verses that has, uh, has changed my life, to be honest. Uh, changed the way I view, the way I live. What is the point of what I'm doing? This changed my life. Mark 10, 43. Jesus, Jesus speaking to his disciples. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you, must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus talks here about greatness. He talks about the meaning of greatness. I don't know what different people's ideas of greatness might be today. Throughout history, there have been many different ideas of greatness. Greatness. Maybe it's career. I think a lot of people would say now, if you have a good career and you're successful in your, your dentistry or in your sales or in your healthcare profession or your veterinary, whatever it might be, that's a successful life. Maybe it's just hard work. You know, if you've sweated and you've given your best to your, you know, your things in life, that's the meaning of life. That's what it means to be great. Maybe it's money. If you've earned more than what you had at the start, you've earned more relative to what you had starting out, then that is a great life. Maybe it's a family. If you could raise a family where your children were happy and things were functional and you were close together, that's the meaning of greatness. Maybe it's friends being popular. That's what it was like at school. You know, If you were popular and had lots of friends, that was it. That was all that mattered, right? And maybe that, that's how people sometimes can view. It's easy to view greatness as that. Maybe it's power, winning, one-upmanship over other people. Oh, my life's better than this person. I earn more money, my car's faster than theirs. And how lucky as Christians we are to know what true greatness really is. Amen? Jesus says here, true greatness isn't what you have physically. It's not what you've achieved. It's not how much money you have. It's not even... You know, your relationships, it's are you a servant. And that's what Jesus says being great is about. Are you willing to serve? We're blessed as Christians to not have to run after the things that we would be tempted to if we weren't Christians. We don't have to run after money. We don't have to run after success in our careers and things like that. Not to say these things aren't, you know, of some value, they certainly are. Having a wonderful family is certainly of value, but true value, Jesus says, comes through a willingness to give and a willingness to serve. And it means that every time we give, our worth and our greatness in God's eyes grows a little bit. And it means that every chance, and obviously we don't earn, we don't earn our way into God's love, but in a sense here, we're seen as greater in the kingdom of heaven the more we can give. And that means that every opportunity to give becomes a blessing. Because it means it's an opportunity for us to grow in the true meaning of true growth, 
because it's the way Jesus says we were meant to grow. <coughs> Next slide, please. And again. Sometimes I know for me, thinking about serving can be a challenge. When I think, oh my gosh, there are so many times I could serve in a day. Or there's so much I could give. I sometimes need some extra encouragement. Next slide, please. A couple of other verses that really motivate, I think, I think are really uh, amazing along the idea of serving. Galatians 6, verse 10, 9 and 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. That idea of reaping a harvest. I imagine a lot of the listeners to the letter of Galatians, when, when Paul wrote it, they had an idea of farming and the idea of a harvest. And all that reward of all those, those hard Hard months of work through the summer, all that hay, I don't know, I've never done any farming, but you know, hay bale throwing and <laughs> grain picking up and combine harvesting or whatever. Um, we didn't have combine harvesters. But um, all that would reap a harvest, right? And all those, all those months and days of hard work in the sun would be worth it in the end. Hebrews 6.10, different, different, different verse, talks about how God doesn't forget the work that we do. Because it's easy, isn't it? Sometimes when we have a situation where even the person maybe you're trying to serve might not even realise you're serving them. Or when you're trying to serve, it's such a small thing. You feel like, is it going to make any difference? But God says, I see it when you serve. And I'll reward you. And I'll give you a harvest. Because I see the heart that you've got. And Jesus says, even that little bit, that little piece of service, that can make you that little bit greater, spiritually speaking, even if it's not what the world tells us. Acts 20.35, another amazing scripture, Paul speaking. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That is so backward in so many senses from how we think. I remember, I'm still like this. Christmas is all about presents. I'm still like this. I'm still a preteen at heart. That's why I love being with the preteens because I'm just fired up to be with them because I'm still a preteen and presents still fire me up even though I'm really old now. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but Jesus says it's more blessed for you to give something to someone than to get something. I love receiving things, I love receiving presents, but it's actually better to give someone a present and to give rather than to take or to get. And that means, you think, how much you love receiving something. I like receiving things quite a lot. How much more amazing is it then to be able to give when I have an opportunity? How much more is it, how much more amazing will it be when God rewards us, both on this earth because we're, we're, we're blessed, our hearts are blessed when we give, and I think we're made gladder as people when we give. And we're also made gladder in heaven in, in the next life. Next slide, please. Service. What's the point? Well, I hope you can see this. there's lots of points to service. Jesus said, if we're going to be Christians, part of the kingdom of heaven is, is to serve rather than to take. True love means to serve. Love truly does, I think, you know, I think we all know love is what it's all about at the end of the day. Love in, love in our, love, our hearts know that we need love. And Jesus says love is to lay down our lives, to give over our lives to people who need it and to serve them. And it's the meaning of greatness. Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest because he could punch people very, very hard. <laughs> True greatness, though, is to serve. True greatness is to give. And true greatness is to not think about what we ourselves need, but what each other needs, both in the church around us and the gifts we can use, 
in order to, to provide that. Or in our relationships with people who aren't Christians. You know, we've got an opportunity to give the gospel to people here in Reading and in the surrounding area. There's no greater gift, no greater way to serve than to give a ticket to eternal life and give a ticket to heaven. I don't know about you, where you're coming from today. Maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you feel like you're not a Christian. I'm sure there are areas, regardless of where you feel you can grow in service. I've grown a lot from when I was a preteen, but I know now I still have a long way to grow further. Maybe this is your first time at church today. I encourage you, sit down with someone who brought you today, or someone you spoke to, and ask them to explain more about what Jesus talks about the real meaning of life. Service and a true relationship with God. And if you are a Christian, think about how you can take your service to the next level so that you can become greater spiritually, you can love more deeply, and you can serve Jesus in a more amazing way. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.